Good morning, lovely people. Um, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, and today is your Yoga Solutions Live and um, uh, weekly broadcast I, 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 uh, where I share the best of what I know with you. Um, and I like to respond to questions. And today I will be talking about feet feet and the perennial issue of uh, pronation or supination, as in um, the feet turn out or the feet turn in, is one way of thinking of it. Uh, more accurately, it's when the inside of the foot is down more, that is uh, pronation, when the outside of the foot is down more, that is supination. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll be sorting the uh, I'll give you s some solutions. It's a common problem. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Um, let's dive into the content. But uh, please uh, do leave a like and uh, share this video around if you, if you enjoy the content. And uh, you can sign up, for my, um, sign up to my Yoga with Mark group on Facebook for free, where, you, uh, where these things are always posted. So, yes, um, yeah, the question came from Mandy. She's working with me at the moment. And um, I like, like I said, I like to respond to questions. And <clears throat> uh, let me see exactly what the question was. Uh, I just have a quick look. Oh dear, this might be um, slowing things down. Okay, I'll, 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 leave, the <laughs> I'll leave the inquiry into um, yeah, okay, here it goes, yeah. How to teach students with either over supinated or over pronated feet? That was Mandy's question. So how to teach, okay. Um, well, how you teach <laughs> is, is uh, your business. It's the way, you know, the, you've got to find your own way to teach this stuff. Um, that being said, you know, the information I give you if, if it's appropriate and uh, works for you and you take it into your own practice and then what, what, the best way of teaching is to experience it in your own body, to, to work it out for yourself, um, work out how to solve those issues yourself and then share that. That being said, I will give you um, some ideas that um, will make sense of why the thing might happen in the first place and what you can do and um yes and you know if you if you if i'm giving you information about how to teach then you tell people <laughs> you tell people where you got your information it's it's, it's um it's an important part of of uh of practice i think is to share your source okay so uh pronation supination so just to define the terms, um, I'm not standing at the moment, but um, and the issue is usually when there is standing. You quite often see this. People will stand on the outside edge of the feet. And that usually goes with the turnout. Right? And that's, that is uh, supination. And it's supination because it's sort of bringing the foot um, up towards you, supination. Pronation, usually you'll find that with people that are knock need and where they rely on the inside of the foot more, okay? So let's bring it into standing so that uh, we have a context. So to repeat that, um, pronated feet is where people don't really use the turn my feet out to, to make it more obvious, where they don't really use the inside of the feet for support. Um, no, that's, sorry, so that's supinated, supinated. Supinated feet is when the um, inside of the foot is lifting. Pronated feet is when the inside of the foot is, is going down and the outside of the foot is lifting. So, uh, definitions aside, um, well, I'll go into the mechanics of it because you kind of need, because when someone, for example, um, doesn't 
has a lifted arch and no real support from the inside of the foot. It's not a it's not a problem of the body. It's a it's um, a relationship. So the, the the person is used to feeling support by leaning onto the outside edge of the foot, and the inside will be this thing that lifts and drops and doesn't really. It's just a sort of uh, the inside of the foot is doing all the proprioceptive balancing. It, it lifts and it drops and it lifts and it drops, and the weight is given to the outside of the foot. So that that's their relationship to the ground. That's where they feel support. And it's not wrong, but, but it does lead to imbalances in the body, okay? So, uh, well, we'll start with that example, because it's the more common one, I think. Um, if you've got that going on, it's because the person is not used to finding support from the inside of the foot. And they'll have, the problems that go with that is when they walk, um, because they don't actually use the inside of the foot, they'll have to lift their weight, lift the weight of the leg, and then fall forwards. And it leads to a way of walking that is hard on your knees and all sorts of things. Um, that's the problem. It, it's, a, it's a very fundamental problem. You know, we, un, unless we can find direct support from the way we touch the ground with our feet, then the, the whole body has to compensate for that absence of support. So it is a very key thing to solve. And um, it, it, when, I, when I started my yoga journey, it was all about feet and very little else. Because and, until the feet could do anything, um, I wasn't going to find solutions to anything else. So how to get someone to find support from the inside of the foot and for that to become a natural relationship? So, the mechanics of it, how do you put the ball of the foot down? Just try it out with me a few times. Plant the ball of the foot on the ground and see what it is that you do to make that happen. Okay. You, might, you might feel your toes lift and stuff, but it, it's not just putting it on the ground because that just put, that makes your knee fall in. And that's why people don't do it, because, uh, well, apart from those that are uh, pronated. Uh, so that, so it's, not a, it's not a movement of the limb. It's a movement of the foot itself. So how do you actively place the ball of the foot? And I'll, I'll give you the answer. It's the outside ankle and the toes. If the toes on the outside edge lift, or the middle toes lift, or and, and the outer ankle is lifting the outer arch, what that does is that plants the ball of the foot. And people that have uh, supinated feet won't feel that that's an option. They, they, it's not something they do with their feet. They don't, they don't do that. They don't lift the outer ankle. They don't lift with the outer arch. And, and the reason I'm going for this one first is because it's the most... Um, uh, commonly missed thing, and uh, it's, it's the most common issue. So, if you can get them to practice lifting the little toe side, lifting the little toe side, eventually, if you get them to notice, because they're doing that by itself, you know, it, it's a thing you need to be able to do, but its purpose is to put the ball of the foot down. So the next thing to do is once you've got them to work out how to lift the outer toes and lift the outer edge of the foot is to get them to put weight on the ball of the foot. Now, if they're not used to taking weight through the foot, what will happen is they'll put weight on the knee like that and then be pushing down against the collapsed foot. So you've got to be clear that in order for this action of touching the ground with the ball of the foot to become natural, it has to have a job to do. And that job is to take weight. So if you can get them to lift with the outer ankle, lift with the little toe side, and then plant the ball of the foot on the ground, and then get them to just nudge their weight onto that, 
And what that will do is it will cause all the muscles around the ankle and the foot to work proprioceptively. When you tell someone that has uh, unresponsive feet to put their weight down, they put, the, put it down on the heel and then the foot can't do anything much, right? So it's the front of the foot, they've got to lift the outer arch, they've got to lift the outer ankle to get the ball of the foot down and then they need to transfer their weight rhythmically onto the ball of the foot without the little toe side touching. That's the instruction if you want to get them to exercise those muscles. And they'll feel, uh, you can see in my leg, there's, it involves deep calf muscle engagement, but that, actually those are the muscles of the toes doing that. And if they can, um, if they can rhythmically keep trusting that foot to take their weight, um, the naturalization of it will be to, uh, when they do it, they'll feel their knee tense on the inside. Okay, so that's all right. It's just part of the proprioceptive response, but you kind of want them to relax. You kind of want them to relax up in space away from it. So as they take weight onto the ball of the foot, you want them to come up, not to lift, but to use that foot to come up. Okay. And when they, if you take their attention to space, then they won't be so heavy on it because being heavy on it makes it difficult. You see? So they get used to the um, action of being supported by a touching foot. And they'll build the proprioceptive strength, if you like, because it will become a response. Okay, once you've done that, once they've done that for a little while, you can get them to transfer a proportion of their weight onto the ball of the foot. And they keep, the important thing is that they keep that action going, the lift going, as they allow the leg to line up again over the midline of the foot. So when they're lifting the outer ankle um, to bring the weight onto the ball of the foot, the knee will be on the inside, right? It'll be slightly turned in. But if they keep the shape of that foot, the engagement, the, the fact of touching the ground, basically, and allow the outer edge of the foot to come down as well, then they can take weight through the inner and outer foot evenly. And that will do the job of kind of uh, balancing out the inner and outer ankle. Um, if, if the weight is received equally between inner and outer foot, then inner and outer ankle will be working appropriately and evenly. If the knee can kind of relax, it, it'll respond and, and the responses will be balancing out the knee. So equal touch, equal response around the knee, you know, if they're giving their weight, eventually it'll end up in the middle. Yeah. And then the job once again is to naturalize it, is to allow themselves to come into space when they do it, to be with space. And the, uh, the, the difficult thing for, for everyone is to keep the foot actively touching rather than just collapse their weight onto the heel. Yeah? When they can quite freely land on the front of their foot and feel supported in space, okay? when they can fr quite freely do that, then you get them to give a pro good proportion of their weight to the front of that foot. And the last part is how to put the heel down without collapsing the action of touch. So the foot stays active and you give weight to the front of the foot, but instead of sort of trying to be up, you allow the heel to kind of fall away from the back of a relaxed knee. You kind of allow gravity to take hold of the heel, not your weight above it to land through the heel, but gravity to take hold of the heel itself and you allow it to be pulled towards the ground and you intend to keep the weight evenly distributed between inner and outer foot. So if as the heel comes down the ball of the foot comes up they're going back to supination. 
if as the heel starts to go down and they keep the sense of using the front of the foot for support, what happens is they, they'll feel their, their knee working, but to allow the heel away from them, what happens is the muscles around the sides of the thigh start to pull up as the heel goes down. And they end up supported not by being heavy on the heel, but by touching the ground with the heel. And that response leads to upward support into and through the pelvis. By this time, their, their calf muscles and their foot muscles will be exhausted, right? But they would have built um, a kind of proprioceptive responsiveness to touch where they start to rely on their ground to support them rather than the holding patterns above the ground that happen when you're not supported by your foot. Okay? So when you take that away, the body has to hold itself. When, you, when that's involved, all of these things are responses to being with the ground. So that was um, focusing on a pronated foot and how to, how to get support from the how to balance out support that way. The um, let's see if we've got a we've got a supinated. Uh, I'm getting my pronated and supinated mixed up. I'm so sorry. But so that was for a supinated foot. Okay, where where the foot falls away from the ground out to the side. For a pronated foot, that's where all the weight is on the inside. Again, it's a collapsed foot response. It's just with the knee on the inside instead of on the outside. Do you see what I mean? So someone would be walk, walking like that, I suppose. Now, um, all sorts of reasons. It's the, 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 it's the same kind of thing, really. It's just that's the way that they found to support themselves, is by holding the knee inwards, and that probably happens at the groin, and then putting their weight down uh, over that and relying on that for support. Okay, so you get that sort of collapsed inwards thing. Comes with all sorts of problems, but the, the problem itself is a non-responsiveness in the foot. So let's see. If you start with that, you've got the knee on the inside of the foot, you probably need to just do the opposite. So let, uh, um, let's try. It needs to be an active thing. See, see the, um, it's, it's, if instead of just letting the foot roll out to the side, that would feel quite dangerous to someone that is used to being pronated. Um, you actively draw the center of the foot up, like you're picking something up uh, like a handkerchief. You know, if you, if you were to grab hold of a handkerchief and pick it up to have a look at it, you know, what would you do with your foot? So grabbing hold of something in the center of the foot and then seeing if that can take your weight, right? And that, that'll be the whole of the outside edge, the, the sort of karate chop edge of the foot. The grasping of the foot will protect the knee whilst you um, give weight to the outside edge. And what you'll probably find in this case is because you're invoking a core responsiveness an inward movement, what you'll probably find is the muscles on the inside of the knee will be responding to the outside edge taking weight. That's okay, it's part of the proprioceptive thing. Now, in order to make this more functional, once they got used to feeling like they can give weight to the outside edge of the foot, you need to, you're gonna to need to come up to space, but before you do that, you need the foot to open up. So you then, add a kind of out through your toes feeling, a, a hitchhiking feeling with the big toe, a lifting up and into space of the big toe. And that hopefully will give you a sense of support with a kind of karate chop away from you feeling, right? Through the outer edge of the foot. And you need the person to allow themselves to come up into space as they do it. This one, you don't take the heel off, okay? You just allow the 
sort of opening, strong opening foot, the spreading of the toes to be enough to rely on in terms of strength of that foot. Okay, so th this is only for um, pronated feet. I wouldn't really bother doing this with people that are used to doing this anyway. Okay. Once they've got used to the weight being on the outside of the foot, you can get them to transfer a good proportion of their weight to that outside edge with the foot working strongly. And once again, well, it's not once again, it's different. Um, there's a sense of, of adding the touch of the ball of the foot. Now, if they're prone to um, pronation, then that will be a passive act for them but you need it needs to become an act an active action of reaching for the ground with the ball of the foot and because you're on your outside edge that will that'll quite naturally use the outside ankle to make that happen so it's this um people that are begin pronated this uh practice is more like working out how to walk you know um learning how to feel supported on the outside edge and then add the ball of the foot for support as you take your weight forwards. So with someone that is collapsed in a pronated way, I would be working with really waking up those responses so that you start on the heel, the outer edge of the foot, and then the ball of the foot has to touch the ground so that that's the thing that your weight rolls over when you take a step, okay? The heel of that foot would have to come off the ground before you arrive on the next foot. So, you know, so someone with pronated feet, I would start them with that action and then probably get them to be active in their pronation by lifting the outer edge of the foot. That is the one that is kind of missing for people in both cases, really. Even the pronated feet, it's a floppy foot. It's a, it's a floppy foot. It's not being actively used to support you. It's just the weight is going down through the inside edge. So both, now that's probably why I started with the learning how to touch the ground with the inside of the foot. Right? Because you, 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 in both cases, you need to develop that action. Um, if you're... So, yeah, what I referred to was... Uh, that was the walking action, starting with the heel and being supported by the outside edge of the foot is an important part of function, right? You, and, you know, if it's active, then there's nothing wrong with that. But it turns into walking when the inside of the foot can be the thing that gives you, that receives your weight. Okay. Uh, if you start with the ball of the foot and then allow the little toe edge to come down, what you're practicing is standing in place because when the heel comes down after that, it leaves you where you are with a sense of, of inner and outer balance through all the joints. So, um, and the reason I'm relating to function, uh, I'm talking about uh, situations where these things naturally occur, is because they have to be applied to natural situations. You know, you, you get someone to come to a yoga class and they, they do all this stuff with their foot and then they go off and walk with a floppy foot. Nothing will have changed because the thing you have to change is the person's relationship to what they're doing. The, person, the person's relationship to their world through their feet. And if they get the idea that walking involves the feet, um, outer, inner, so you can roll over the inner foot, right? If they, if they understand that, then that action will mean that their feet start, are used to, uh, when they walk which will strengthen the responses. Then the feet will no longer be pronated or supinated. 
Okay, um, I think that covers it. I hope that was useful, Mandy, and uh, anyone else that is interested in feet. Um, yes, do uh, smash the like button for me and uh, share it around Facebook if you found it of value and of interest. And um, yes, uh, feel free to uh, put up your questions on my Yoga with Mark group. Uh, for some reason, Facebook doesn't allow me to post videos directly uh, to uh, do live streams directly on my group. So I do it on my profile page and, and transfer it across. But do leave questions. Um, yeah, in the apps, uh, I, I think I'm just going to only do these yoga solutions live when I do get a question because, um, yeah, it makes my my efforts. Um, uh, well, it means I, I'm, I'm, I'm responding to someone's needs and that's what my game is really. Uh, if, you, if you want to, um, I'll be here at the same time, same place next week, provided I get a question. Um, and if you want to work with me directly, you can book a free 15 minute consultation and you can tell me what you need and I'll give you an idea of uh, how to solve it if I can. Um, I usually have an idea, but putting it into practice is another matter. No, it takes practice and uh, if you want some help with that you can book one-to-ones or if you want to work with my general idea of things then come and join me I, every Saturday I do a two and a half hour workshop with a break in the middle and that workshop is always based on the needs of the participants so um, wh whatever theme I'm on at the moment um, I always um, yeah I, I cover what you need if you turn up okay and that's on uh, this Saturday. Uh, you can book it on my website, uh, www.aquaviva.yoga. Um, yes. All right. I'll see you, you lovely people, soon. Much love now. Bye-bye.